There are a surprising number of historical anomalies, which scrutinizes the current, often outdated explanations as to the possible origins of human civilization. Anomalies which suddenly bring the age of countless, inexplicable ancient ruins found all over the globe into question. There exist inner circles of historical specialists who have quietly been battling it out over the authenticity of groundbreaking finds made over the ages, a smoldering cauldron of unavoidable controversies with frequent yet often failed attempts at discreditation. Ancient discoveries, argued over behind closed doors, often within prestigious institutions, each and all with vested interests on the retention of already established paradigms, illusionary or not. With the Glozel affair being of no exception. Possibly one of the most explosive discoveries which could be unleashed on the historical academic community. A controversial congregation of artifacts of vastly varying dates would be an understatement. Rows of ancient, technologically advanced uparts, created by groups originating from all corners of the world, some dating back to the Neolithic, with an array of other periods present, all laid undisturbed for untold millennia, a seemingly modern-age historical impossibility. A number of independent investigators continue to entertain the idea that academically funded historians accidentally stumbled upon and subsequently partially exposed to the world a perfectly preserved pre-Atlantis antediluvian museum. One so controversial, if the battles over carbon dating be won, by those who support said theory, it would turn our chronological understandings of man upside down. Arguments over the authenticity of the discovery raged on for many decades until the outbreak of the World War in 1939. Multiple lawsuits were launched, five international battles were undertaken, all to either prove or disprove the site's authenticity. Yet, it wasn't until 1974, when a Glenn Daniel, professor of archaeology at Cambridge University, took another, more significant look at the Glozell Affair's artifacts. Although with the clear intention of proving through carbon and other forensic testing that the true ages would ultimately reveal a fakery. Unfortunately, the complete opposite occurred. What was doubly bad for Daniel regarding these peer-reviewed results was that the finds, one luckily buried by the war, had now been plucked from the archives and back into the forefront in the academic field of discussion, yet now with no way of receiving dismissal. In 2019, another examination and scrutinization of the original tests was undertaken, and they held up. So, at a public symposium on archaeometry at Oxford University, details of further work undertaken by McCarroll of Edinburgh and Maydahl, Denmark, claim to show that the age of the ceramics alone is unquestionably great and authentic. This is a site which is undoubtedly incredibly important, and one we will definitely be exploring again in the near future. We find the Glozel Affair highly compelling. Divers from oil companies located within the North Sea have been discovering the remains of a drowned ancient city, which once spanned from the UK all the way to Denmark. An ancient city so massive its suspected population has been estimated well into the tens of thousands. A team of climatologists, archaeologists, and geophysicists have now successfully mapped the area, which has revealed just how vast and expansive this once lost land once was. Many specialists are now claiming this was once the real heartland of Europe. This enormous civilization is now believed to have dated back to some 8,000 years ago, and that the landmass was submerged over a period of several thousand years, a submersion which began some 20,000 years prior. Dr. Richard Bates of the Department of Earth Sciences at St. Andrews, who organized the Drowned Landscapes exhibit, covering the finds within the UK, says the data reveals the human story behind Doggerland a now submerged city of the North Sea that was once larger than many modern European countries. Could these discoveries reveal Doggerland as the real lost city of Atlantis? Several hypotheses have placed the sunken island of Atlantis within modern northern Europe, 
most noted among such researchers is Olaus Rudbeck, who suspected that Doggerland, as well as a Viking Bergen Island, which is thought to have been flooded by a mega tsunami following the Storega slide in 6100 BC, is the real location of Atlantis, a proposition he put forward all the way back in the 1600s. Some have proposed the Celtic Shelf as a possible location, and that there are certainly links to Ireland. Many places have been put forward for the possible location of the sunken city throughout the years, yet none have revealed ruins worthy of such claims, many of these areas being too small to have housed such an enormous city. Doggerland, however, fits the bill. Not only could it turn out to be the largest ancient civilization found on Earth, but it also rests in a possible location based on historical research for the city of Atlantis. It was submerged at one point in its history, and it is revealing astonishing ruins of a once great and presently unknown civilization. Dr. Bates, a geophysicist, said Doggerland was the real heartland of Europe until sea levels rose to give us the UK coastline of today. We have speculated for years on the lost land's existence, from bones dredged by fishermen all over the North Sea, but it's only since working with oil companies in the last few years that we've been able to recreate what this lost land looked like. When the data was first being processed, I thought it unlikely to give us any useful information. However, as more area was covered, it revealed a vast and complex landscape. We have now been able to model its flora and fauna, build up a picture of the ancient people that lived there, and begin to understand some of the dramatic events that subsequently changed the land, including the sea rising and a devastating tsunami. The research project is a collaboration between St. Andrews and the Universities of Aberdeen, Birmingham, Dundee, and Wales Trinity St. David. I will keep you posted on their future discoveries. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. There are many unusual artifacts that can now be thankfully found within countless private collections all over the world, all of them currently unexplained by modern science. Stones made from pure oxygen, metal objects created in a zero-g environment, unexplained glass cups, slabs and tools, the list grows, and our next artifact of interest could have even once resided within the legendary city of Atlantis. 47 pieces of a mysterious alloy many have attributed to a metal once known as orichalcum. A metal, many say, was only ever found within the once highly advanced city of Atlantis. Discovered within a shipwreck off the coast of Sicily, they were found during an expedition to a wreck believed to be over 2,600 years old. The ship was previously explored in 2015, when underwater archaeologists found 39 ingots of another mysterious metal, the details of which not yet released to the public. This trip, however, yielded an ancient jar, two Corinthian helmets, and the 47 lumps of ancient orichalcum said to have been smelted upon the fabled island of Atlantis. Plato specifically described this rare metal as having been mined there. He even described a temple dedicated to Poseidon, having an entire pillar made from orichalcum. Interestingly, after the discovery in 2005, officials began to conceal the true identity of this mysterious metal attributing other metals, such as copper and gold, found at the site as orichalcum. News Corp Australia also reported that tradition had it that orichalcum was made of copper, gold, and silver, this statement having no historical accuracy whatsoever. Furthermore, the metal found by the shipwreck team was said to have matched the ancient descriptions of orichalcum. Are they really surviving artifacts from the lost city of Atlantis? They are undoubtedly incredible ancient artifacts and compelling evidence to support the past existence of a highly advanced civilization that once flourished here upon our planet. What exactly is Orichalcum, and why is it mentioned within so many ancient texts pertaining to the past existence of Atlantis? And why are the dive team and the subsequent researchers of their finds so convinced of the alloy's identity we find the discovery highly compelling? An unexpected discovery was recently made by a group of scientists 
while exploring an as-yet unmapped section of the Pacific Ocean just off the coast of Hawaii, they stumbled upon something incredibly intriguing. During the exploration of the summit of an undersea mountain around an area known as the Papahānaumo Kuakea Marine National Monument, a protected conservation area encompassing some 580,000 square miles northwest of Hawaii, researchers stumbled upon and briefly along a possibly incredibly ancient yellow brick road. It's the road to Atlantis, one scientist has quipped to the press jovially, not realizing how accurate he may one day be found to be. Quote, Our exploration of this never-before-surveyed area is helping researchers take a deeper look at life on and within the rocky slopes of these deep ancient seamounts. Previous expeditions aboard the Nautilus research vessel have unearthed a plethora of eerie aquatic anomalies. End quote. What makes the discovery interesting is its seemingly artificial nature, appearing to indeed be the legendary yellow brick road to Atlantis, one made of bricks laid next to each other in a near-perfect fashion, many of which exhibiting 90-degree angles. Others involved in the mission have also been quick to discredit the discovery, however, claiming it is nothing other than a natural formation. Quote, at the summit of Nootka Seamount, the team spotted a dry lake bed formation, now identified as a fractured flow of hyaloclastite rock. The remarkable brick-like divisions between the rocks are likely the coincidental result of heating and cooling stresses from multiple volcanic eruptions over millions of years." End quote. There are many ancient antediluvian ruins which have been discovered and indeed shared here upon our channel many so undeniably artificial that their sheer existence due to the geological data and thusly the dating of their submersion continue to pose historical chronology a real problem, and we feel if further investigation of this site could possibly be undertaken in the future, this explanation of it being a natural formation could one day be perceived as a dismissal of a truly ancient yet also clearly yellow brick road. Could the yellow brick road to Atlantis, just like that of the Bimini Road, one day be found to be a true road? Well, we find such possibilities highly compelling. Lake Titicaca This familiar named lake is located deep within the Andes. Now sliced in two by the borders of Bolivia and Peru, it is not only the largest lake in South America, but it is also undoubtedly the most important historically that can be found anywhere on Earth. Many tales have surfaced over the years involving submerged citadels, mountains of gold relics, and vast ancient ruins scattered across the lake bed. Stories of amateur archaeologists becoming very wealthy from astonishing yet not publicly disclosed discoveries which lay beneath the waves. We found 2,000 objects and fragments, declared Christophe Delarere a Belgian archaeologist at a ceremony in La Paz. According to Christophe, divers from his team found the objects more than 7 meters underwater off the coast of the Island of the Sun. These included 31 large golden relics. Archaeologists think these discoveries are just the beginning of something far greater, and for good reason. As time goes on, claims made a long time ago begin to appear more and more likely. According to Colonel John Blashford Snells, a notorious explorer, his extensive explorations of the lake, the surrounding ancient culture, and his resulting research, the ancient city of Tiwanaku, very near the lake shores, copied their original building knowledge from the scientists of the mysterious and legendary lost city of Atlantis. Interestingly, ancient Incan legend also corroborates his conclusions, stating that the mythical founders of their amazing empire did indeed once emerge from the lake's waters. The lake was considered the center of the cosmos by the Incan people, and they also somehow knew its shape, something we have only been able to achieve from a very high altitude. Ancient Inca legends tell that after a great flood, the creator god Viracocha emerged from Lake Titicaca. It stated that he created, though this more than likely means they believe he restored the sun, moon, and stars. Viracocha was fair-skinned and long-beard. He brought a great culture to the ancient peoples of South America. 
the 16th century Spanish chronicler Pedro Sarmiento de Gamboa recorded in his Historica de los Incas a tale about Manco Capac, the first Inca. According to Inca mythology, the Inca are the direct descendants of a mythical first Inca, named Manco Capac, who emerged from one of the three openings in the mountain Tambotoco, located 33 kilometers to the south of Cusco, Peru. Manco Capac is said to have created the Incan civilization through Varacocha. Even though his figure is mentioned in several chronicles, his actual existence remains unclear. Could this original and possibly vast ancient culture still be resting upon the bottom of Lake Titicaca? Did something catastrophic occur in our very distant past which filled this lake, once a large fertile valley, filled with what we have all become familiar as the lost city of Atlantis? The University of Seville, working in collaboration with the Andalusian Institute of Historical Heritage, has conducted an intensive LIDAR survey in a historically compelling area between the Spanish coastal towns of Capasoto and Sancti Petri. Their goal was to discover the remnants of a long-written-of temple, one dedicated to ancient deities. However, what they discovered instead was an incredibly ancient, once enormous, mass dwelling. Complex, yet intelligently laid out, as if almost akin to modern-day standards of care in regard to sanitation management, food production, and quality of dwelling for its massive population's well-being. A mega-metropolis that, predictably, the academics responsible for its discovery have not only attempted to downplay the find, but also tried to claim it as merely proof of their original temple assertion. Clearly, they are merely backing the tale of events put forth by whomever funded said expedition. From the researchers themselves, quote, The survey area consisted of submerged landscape, seemingly dominated by a series of ancient marshes. Something we feel was most probably intelligently managed farmlands prior to the Great Deluge, which eventually drowned this entire mega-metropolis. Yet I digress. They continued, The study revealed a new ancient coastal landscape, with the presence of moorings, an inland port, and several large, monumental buildings." End quote. By combining data from previous anomalous discoveries, the team created a cross-section of findings, and by a process of elimination, they pinpointed an area in which to scan. Yet, interestingly, after said discoveries of the structures, they quickly and simply delimited the entire area without any further field study or investigation whatsoever. Could this rapid delimitation of the area in regards to the LIDAR scanning possibly be in an attempt to obscure the true enormity of this pre-flood ruin? During their focused investigation, they found rectangular structures some 300 by 150 meters in size. However, these discoveries contradicted their own strictly followed academic accounts of this supposedly legendary temple's whereabouts. This discovery being the mission's objective all along, yet curiously, as mentioned, any further expansion of the LIDAR investigations, academic funding has been stonewalled. Could their reluctance to continue further investigations on a mission which has already clearly cost a lot of funding due to them actually having discovered yet another complexly, intelligently, clearly advanced pre-flood megametropolis? Well, we find said possibilities and the rapid growth of independently owned LiDAR technology incredibly exciting. <laughs>